We're going live. We're going live. So if you're watching the pre-recording, please give me about 30 seconds so that I can get some people uh, in the live broadcast before I begin the uh, meat of this um, this live show. Hmm. Notifications have been sent out, but it usually takes a good 30 seconds or so before Google sends them out. We'll see what happens. Here we go. Hey, how are you? You're the first. Hey, hello from Serbia. There we go. This is like an uh, international, uh, international show, international nerds. Mm. Hello from Sweden. London. Fantastic. DC. Wow. That's Washington, D.C. This guy lives in a place called Plus One. Oh, I guess he lives in D.C. Hey, Google Flutter. Okay, we got the questions. <laughs> Serbia, Lebanon. Start your journey with your full stack course. Cool. Thanks for picking it up. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Hello from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. All right. The other place in the world where you can smoke weed and it's legal. Yeah, I don't know if you know, Canada, we legalized it a year ago, I guess, about a year ago. Guess what? The world has not fallen apart. Um, and I'm not a smoker. I don't have a dog in this fight. Hello from Romania, South Africa, Finland, D.C. here again. Well, I got some D.C. people. India, France, La France, 420, <laughs> Kentucky. To Kentucky. Yeah, I've never been to Kentucky. I got I to gotta go visit you guys sometimes. Romania, Spain, Netherlands, Philadelphia. All right. This guy's from somewhere. Undisclosed location. He's working on a secret project. Can't let anybody know what he's doing right now. Seattle. Ah, everything is international these days. That is true. That is true. How are we doing? We're already at 80 people. Are you going to talk about Angular today? I'm going to talk about JavaScript frameworks. I pulled up a piece. We're going to look over together, and we'll just do our general discussions, and we'll take it uh, from there. John says, hello to everybody from Turkey, Istanbul. That's a place I want to visit, by the way. I heard very good things. I had a friend who lives from there, and she was telling me it's, uh, she, showed some, she showed some pictures. Super nice. Hello from Russia. Mm. Rwanda, cool. Greece. All right. So, wow. It's, a, it's, 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 you know, I have to admit, guys, I'm surprised that it's so many people. I thought it would be more centered in North America, but, well, I have to tell you, man, it's really an international audience, which is very cool. So, okay, we got 100 people. And so let me uh, just jump into this uh, very quickly. Uh, somebody asked me about JavaScript frameworks. There's so many frameworks out there, how to choose. Now, if you know my material, you, you know, you know, the um, laws of code, the seven laws of code, uh, law number six tells you, let the market decide. So that being said, you have to start with your basic JavaScript. You got to understand the basics of JavaScript. The big mistake that people make, I've heard of it, they, they hear there's a, lot of there's a lot of action in terms of jobs in React. So what they do is they, uh, they go take a React course and then they're lost because they don't know JavaScript, they don't know HTML. And so that's a problem. So you have to start with the basics, then you can decide which frameworks to get into. So let's we'll see what's this. Uh, hello from Romania. I'm building a framework myself too for Node.js. You never have enough of them. <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat. You know, I built my own Java web framework back in the, in the 90s. Uh, but at the time, I just didn't like what was out there. Um, what's going on here? Nice. Need some chat material for my next blind date. <laughs> yes, if you talk about JavaScript frameworks, the ladies love it. Uh, where are we going? Uh, let's see. From Germany, Switzerland. What's up, Steph? Baltimore checking in. Cool. Pakistan, cool. International. All right, so let me just jump into this article. I'm just going to skim it. It gives you your typical stats. And uh, we'll take it from there. So top JavaScript frameworks and topics to learn in 2020. And this guy's opinion. 
I'm less concerned about his opinion because you talk to 20 different programmers, you're going to get 20 different, 22 different opinions. Um, so let's just look at, well, I agree with this. It's first, you learn JavaScript. So that, okay, we can agree on that one. Uh, he says, before you worry too much about tech stacks, learn JavaScript and how to compose software with it. If you can't explain what a function composition, object composition modules are, start here. Uh, all software development is composition. We take large, complex problems, break it down into smaller problems that we can solve with building blocks of software, functions, objects, modules, so on. So that's cool. So let's go down and let's see what's going on in terms of the trends. Again, you have to look at market trends and market forces when you're looking at uh, your technology, besides your own personal preferences, because, you know, you may like Flash, but if there's no jobs, who cares? All right, so he's showing here in 20, 20, 2019. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, you see in terms of, you see React is by far dominant. You see Angular is kind of sloping down. But you see Vue is starting to rise. Now, about a year and a half ago, I was talking about Vue, and you see it's starting to rise. So the way it looks, if this trajectory continues, uh, React is still going to be far and away, you know, in terms of downloads, the most popular, but you see Vue is rising. I got a feeling you're going to see Vue rise. Uh, it's going to go past Angular. So it's going to be, be between Vue and React. Now, React is so dominant now, I don't know if React will ever be replaced, to be in all honesty. Not that it matters much, if you know my philosophy. Um, uh, he says, okay, no, jQuery is excluded here because many jQuery projects are light, light, are legacy projects. Legacy just means very old, uh, which do not use NPM, so it would be severely undercut. So, okay, he's using NPM as the metric to, to see what the downloads are like. So it's not necessarily the most accurate, but nonetheless. So let's go job postings. React, Angular, jQuery, and Vue. So that's interesting. You see jQuery, terrible jQuery. Still a lot of jobs, right? Still a lot of jobs uh, in the jQuery worried world. Again, a lot of older stuff. As I talk about in um, many of my uh, videos, I talk about how you have to pay attention to um, this, a lot of the older tech that people sort of poo-poo. At the end of the day, let me brighten this image up a little bit. At the end of the day, um, a lot of projects are out there. There's a lot of code out there, and there's a lot of things being maintained. Like I'll cite this recent event, COBOL. There's all these COBOL jobs. Or, you know, COBOL is like a 50-year-old language, and there's still need COBOL programmers. So you know, don't get caught up on the hype train. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's go back to the article. Yeah, React strengthened its lead last year while both Angular and jQuery lost ground to Vue. Here's a pie chart showing the relative job market share for each framework. So, okay, so Angular, jQuery dropping, Vue increasing, React is really increasing. I think uh, three years from now, you'll probably see a lot of React and Vue jobs, but you're still going to see jQuery and Angular jobs. When technologies hit a point where they're so big, uh, even if something new comes along to replace it, it takes years and years and years and years before there's no more jobs in that technology. So whether you learn React or Angular or uh, Vue, uh, you could jump and pivot from one or the other. So let's go back. Okay, the average JavaScript developer salary increased in 2019 from 111K to 114K. So on average, is going up. What does that tell you? That tells you that there is an increasing demand for JavaScript programmers, right? The doom and gloomers out there, oh, no, will there, will there be jobs? As I see over and over and over again, as I say over and over and over again, rather, it just, just the, as far as I can see, as far as the eye can see in terms of the data I've seen, there, there's not enough programmers for jobs. That's why the salaries are so bloody high. It's one of the reasons anyway. Let's see, methodology. I like this guy. I like this article where he put the methodology. It's good to know um, where they derive their stats from. Uh, just a little, uh, little, little tip. You got to always look at where the stats come from, how the stats are derived, because you can, you can, you can, 
finagle your reports based on how you select your stats to get any result that you want, right? So it's always good to know uh, how they are deriving their data. Uh, something I learned when I was studying psychology in university, the first year that you study psychology, you study the scientific method. The scientific method is that it is a, a method. It's a, it's a, it's a way of, uh, it's, it's, it's a practice, it's a skill set. So you learn how to do that. So that's one of the things you learn how to uh, question data. Okay, so how did they get this data? Job searches were conducted on Indeed.com to weed out false positives. I pair searches with keyword software to strengthen their chance of relevance and multiply by 1.5, roughly the difference between programming, job listings, and the word software. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you went to Indeed.com and tried to put into play certain controls. So what else? What's the Google search trend? Ah, uh, yeah. React, Angular, Vue, and jQuery. Look at that, yeah. Look how much jQuery is being searched for, given the fact jQuery is old. So, uh, uh, as you would expect, search interest, search interest is somewhat reflective of the job market with some interesting differences. We can clearly see a waning interest in jQuery between 27 in 2017 and today with a strong growth in Vue.js search interest. As people know, been following me for a while, when I saw Vue was a year and a half ago, two years ago, I said, that's the one to look into. So in fact, it is growing. Uh, again, you'll, three years from now, you'll probably see a similar pie with the green being bigger and the yellow being a little smaller and the red being a little smaller. You probably, that's what you're gonna see. Uh, as with job postings, React has a strong lead, attracting 36% of the search volume for front-end frameworks, followed by Angular at about 27, jQuery 25. Search interests in Vue.js is larger than its job market share by a healthy margin. That's interesting. But this data generally agrees with the job market data ranking. It looks like we have successful co corroboration. Okay, so this is an interesting line. I like this line here. Search interest in Vue.js is larger than its job market share by a healthy margin. What I think that is, is that the search interest is a future indicator. So what does that mean? People are searching for Vue now because they're interested in implementing Vue. So the fact there's a lot more search interest than jobs, that tells me there's going to be much more jobs because more and more people are going to be implementing a Vue, right? I hope that makes sense. Let's see what he says. Uh, frameworks to watch in the future. More jobs are looking for skills with React than for skills with any of the other popular but less widely used frameworks, such as Svelte or Vue, uh, which both have highly satis high satisfaction ratings, but comparably far smaller ado industry adoption. I never heard of, I've heard of this, but I don't know much about it. I think Vue is the one to look for. And there's another interesting data point to take into mind. A lot of people really like uh, Vue, very high satisfaction ratings, which again, points to future adoption could be very good with that framework. So let's continue down. Let's see what else this guy has to say. Uh, it's strong bet, but having mastery of React will increase your odds of finding and retaining a great job in 2020. I can't argue with that. Um, again, you got to start with the basics of JavaScript, but I think if you go with Vue or um, React, I think you're going to be in a good position going forward. What's he going to do? What's going on with TypeScript here? There is no question TypeScript has grown very rapidly over the course of the last few years, and according to the state of JavaScript survey, 89% of TypeScript users would use it again, and 66% 66, 66 of the survey respondents either use TypeScript or are interested in using TypeScript. Now, don't make don't take this to mean that 66% uh, of coders are using it. They're saying you know it could be 5% of people are using it, and 66% of that 5% like it. I'm not taking a shot at TypeScript. I'm just letting you know you got to look at the data here. Uh, but while interest is certainly strong and usage seems to be growing quickly, experience with TypeScript is not yet in in strong demand on the job market. Only 7% of JavaScript openings mention TypeScript in the description. 
This is probably undercounting TypeScript jobs a little because hiring managers expect Java developers, JavaScript developers to be capable of picking up TypeScript without much trouble. Well, yeah, if you know JavaScript, for you to pick up TypeScript wouldn't be difficult. Uh, so it's gone. All right, data manager, let's see what's going on here. Redux is still has a strong lead in state of, of in the state of manager race, but GraphQL and Apollo are gaining satisfaction and interest. I expect to see continued growth in GraphQL. So we're going off subject a little bit perhaps, but um, there you go. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, he's going into back end too. Okay, let's just check the back end while we're here. Uh, back end, Express is the dominant node framework with very high satisfaction and no serious challenges going to 2020. But with the risk of serverless, I expect to see Express dominance slip with new as a new decade unfolds. There we go. A little, yeah, and, you know, there's no, uh, there's Express and then there's everything else. So, you know. All right. So um, I think we'll leave that. There's, you know, I just wanted to talk about JavaScript here. So let's go into the uh, Q&A a little bit. So let me ask you before I continue, post in the comments, do you like me going over articles like this and throwing in my two cents? The nerd news I had talked about previously. Let me know in the comments. Uh, and uh, around 191 people, uh, 189, okay, 45 thumbs up. Come on, give me some thumbs up if you like this format. Or if you prefer, I don't read articles and I do other things. Let me know. Mm. Let's see what this guy says. Hold on. COBOL is in high demand. Should we be learning COBOL? Only if you want to learn COBOL. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of work in COBOL for the next decade or so because there's just so much going on. There's so much legacy code out there. But check into whether or not you, you want to code in COBOL because uh, article link. Can I post that? I think I'll post it in the comments, but I'll post it in the, uh, I'll post it in the, uh, when the, when the video goes uh, into our, on YouTube, I'll, when I add to the description, I'll post the uh, link to the article. News reviews, all good. Yes, yes, yes. Is your study web course outdated in any way? I teach the foundations, so the foundations have not changed since I built out the Studio Web course. So the short answer is no. Uh, the projects we do have, some of them are pretty old, and I wanted to take them down, but people wanted them, but they're not needed. Like 90% of the value in the Studio Web is the foundation courses. Don't let the, the foundation term fool you, as a lot of people have figured out. It takes you from totally knowing nothing to intermediate level coder, and it gives you the skills to be able to learn any framework that you want. So short answer, no, it's not dated. Do I cover all the brand new stuff? No, but I cover those key foundations so that you can learn all that stuff very easily if you need to learn it. Um, when you're developing a course and when you are uh, learning to code and when you are coding, you can't expect to know everything. It's impossible. And you have to select what technologies you're going to learn uh, based on the needs of the job at the time. So I give you what you need to get quickly into the professional world. Uh, wasn't there a ton of COBOL work around Y2K? I think so. Y2K was a giant scam, by the way. The whole Y2K scare where they said, oh, my God, oh, my God, when it, when it hits 2000, it, uh, the world's going to fall apart. Jets, jets are going to fall out of the sky. And, and people literally believe this stuff. And uh, they were preppers living in bunkers. It was, it was crazy. And companies made fortunes, fortunes, fortunes. I never believed it because I remember when Y2K was around 1999. And they were all saying, what will happen to computers when it hits 2000? So all I did is I went to my Windows computer. I think it was Windows 98. And I just clicked the clock to 2000. Nothing happened. So I was, I was pretty uh, confident nothing was going to happen. Stefan, can you do a similar analysis with code from real website inspector view, not just with articles? Thanks. That's a good idea. I do that in my courses, by the way. I show you how to use the, uh, uh, the Google inspector, the code, you know, the code view and stuff. And uh, yeah, so 
I do that there. So uh, if you want to see it, but I might do it. Uh, maybe I'll do one on YouTube. We'll see. Uh, uh, I want to learn back end language. I'm familiar with no, and I want to learn second one. Which would you choose now? Python or C sharp, given the fact I'm transferring from JavaScript? Well, C sharp will be closer to JavaScript in terms of the syntax. Um, I would let I would be less concerned in terms of the um, the aspects of the language in terms of making your choice. I would kind of look at where you might want to go in terms of your programming career. See if you want to go more in the direction where they they tend to use Python or more in the direction where they tend to use C sharp. That might be a better way of looking at that. Should I start with Vue.js or React.js, even though our country demands React.js? Well, if you want to work in React, then work with React, you know, especially if, if you want to get a job in that. I would do that. Um, yeah, so, you know, I would suggest React if your main concern is jobs. But look around. You might find some Vue jobs, you know. You might, you know, it's interesting. Even though, like with the COBOL situation, even though there's far fewer COBOL jobs, I bet you today, than JavaScript jobs, but because there's so there's so few COBOL programmers still programming today, relative to the number of COBOL jobs, it might be easier to get a COBOL job than it is to get a JavaScript job. Now that it's hard to get a JavaScript job, I hope you understand what I mean there. Uh, let's see what we got here. Stefan, is it Real for a person to switch from electrical engineering to C++ and get some job. I know Python mid-level, but I can't find any job in my area. Well, there's then there's no Python jobs in here. You got to look at the other languages. A lot of people I know, like I know I, I know a lot of programmers in um, my circle of friends, and I think of like the six or seven people that I know that are coders. I think two or three of them they're engineers. One is a um, electrical engineer, one is a mechanical engineer. Coding had nothing to do with their job, with their education, right? They just, oh, you're an engineer, learn to code. So I wouldn't be, you're fine. That's all I'm trying to say. Let's see what Sherry has to say. I'm a .NET developer with no background in web development. I'm required to learn Angular since I used, since it's used in our portals. Can I start learning Angular after finishing HTML, CSS, JavaScript course? Of course. You do those, you, you'll be able to blast through uh, my HTML, CSS, JavaScript course, and then you'll be able to pick up Angular pretty, uh, pretty easily. In the end, most of concepts are reusable in other frameworks libraries. True. So go with the one, go with one and understand it thoroughly. I agree 100%. Same thing with MVC. Whether you're doing Django MVC, ExpressJS MVC, uh, Ruby Rails MVC, by far, PHP Laravel MVC, it's MVC. MVC, MVC is a design pattern that is used to build most modern apps. Uh, yep. What's going on here? Hey, Stefan, which JavaScript frameworks are useful for Java developers? Thanks in advance. Well, I, I would guess. If you're doing legacy apps, you, you might find a lot of Java developers are using Angular. All right, we'll see what Emad has to say here. Hey, Stefan, Laravel or Vue, and Vue.js or Laravel and React. Well, if you're using Laravel, I would use Vue because uh, Vue is, it comes with Laravel. And that guy, I forget his name, who um, built Lar uh, Laravel, he's a pretty smart cookie. So we use Laravel with Vue.js for Studio Web. Hey, Steph, which language has a steeper learning curve among Java and JavaScript? It's going to be Java, I think. Um, I say I think because Java is a lot more concepts you got to learn, but at the same time, well, there's some more concepts you got to learn. But at the same time, it's I find it's better structured than JavaScript, and so it's more consistent. JavaScript's got some weird behavior where uh, sometimes it does this, and then in other special situations, it does something else. Whereas Java, it's very consistent. But Java is a huge beast. I'd probably go with JavaScript with the first language then. 
Will, me will Blazor make a better choice than Angular for .NET developers? You know what? I don't know. I would have to look into that. Somebody could chime in. Do they know Blazor in that context? Hi, I am an aspiring to be a data scientist and I have set up a plan. I set up a plan of learning Java, then Python, then SQL. After that, machine learning. Do you think that would be enough for a job application? Well, to be a data scientist, you have to be a data scientist as far as I understand. So are you a data scientist? The coding is in addition to being a data scientist, right? As far as I understand. Uh, yeah, let's see. I just started .NET with C Sharp. Should I leave it for PHP or just add both to my resume? Well, if you just started, just keep learning it and be mindful of the jobs. Remember the uh, my, uh, my seven laws of code, you know? Law number six, pay attention to the market. The market guides you. Hi, Stefan. Would going from TypeScript to Java be easier step than vanilla JS to Java? Yeah, if TypeScript, I believe, is object-oriented, uh, so it might be easier. Uh, but, you know, once you get your head wrapped around programming in general, it's not difficult to move from one to the next, you know. Uh, let's see what Jake has to say. See if we can help him out. Kind of stuck in a rut where I feel like I'm stuck doing tutorials over and over. Do you have any tips? Yes. Um, again, part of my seven laws of code. Uh, you got to get out there and start doing a few gigs. You got to take that leap of faith. You don't want to get caught in tutorial hell. You're not the only one. A lot of people are. And if they, when they take my advice and they, they just go out there, put up a site, reach out to local companies, local businesses, coffee shop, butcher, whatever, bike shop. And if they don't have a site or if they have a crappy looking site, say, I'll help you fix up your site for free and just, you know, go with it. You know, I'm telling you, that's going to, you're going to learn so much more. You're going to gain a lot of confidence and then you can start making money and stop messing around with tutorials. How to become a freelance web developer? Well, you start a site, you reach out to local guys, local businesses, you start doing my course, my freelance course. A link will be below, it teaches you everything step by step. People love that course. It comes with a bunch of templates, guides you through the whole process. It's not that difficult with the guide. I, Stefan, can I become a freelance web front end dev in three months? Yes, people have done it, I know. I have front end skills, but I don't know any framework. You don't necessarily need to know any frameworks to get into freelance. Um, the uh, requirement for framework use is more or less working for a company. Uh, freelance, a lot of jobs will be very simple. And frankly, the people hiring you, they may, they probably don't know anything about a framework or whatever a framework is. So um, if you want to maximize your chances of getting jobs as a freelancer, I, I always say have a broad set of skills. So I would learn a little back end, probably a little PHP back end, and probably help you get more jobs much more quickly. All right. Can you recommend any good app to write code on iPhone? Something like Sublime Text, but mobile. I have no clue. Somebody have any ideas about uh, writing code on an iPhone? I would never think of doing that, but you know, how are we doing for time? Okay, half an hour in, not so bad. Hmm. All right, 223 viewers today, not bad. I think the record was 330 three viewers a couple days ago. All right, well, answer Tyler. Path for building a business of developing desktop apps, mobile, C Sharp, or JavaScript to streamline everything with website. Thank you. Hmm. Well, if you're going to do, if you want to do desktop apps, then you would want to go with uh, probably Windows because there's so many more Windows users. And that means C Sharp.net. Um, yeah, and then with the C-sharp, you can do, you can pivot into C-sharp, .asp, ASP.net, excuse me, and then um, you can start building web apps that way. But then you're stuck in the Microsoft world, which can be great, which can be fine, because Microsoft is doing really good work in terms of their uh, development tools. I have two years of Dev Java. Is it still a good idea to do freelance? Why not? If 
I don't know how many freelance jobs you're going to get in, in the Java world. I think uh, I'll put this up for everybody to see. But, um, you know, you could pivot into all kinds of different languages. Can you repeat your seven laws of code? I will. I'm actually going to record a, a mini series with uh, the super high quality video and audio. And uh, all right, everybody follow uh, Colleen's lead. Everybody should follow her lead. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put that up and it'll be uh, on a, a playlist pretty soon. Okay, what we got here? Stefan, do you use a lot of layers when it comes to architecture or it depends on the project? Uh, layers, you, are you talking about app layers? Are you talking about that? Um, it depends on the project. Architecture all comes down to project. You don't want to over-engineer, but you don't want to under-engineer if you've got a complex project. All right, so let's go down. Um, do, you suggest, do you suggest focus on Golang, Rust? Languages are promising, but we don't see many jobs. Um, I would not focus on them because of the job issue. I don't think they're going to become much more than a niche uh, language. So if you want to learn them on the side, learn them on the side, but concentrate on where the money is. That's one of my mentors. Uh, he used to say, follow the money when it came to making choices. All right, let's see what Roman has to say. How can I be a freelancer? I never get project, not even a task. I know Mernstack development. Well, look at local job, look at local companies, look at local job listings, see if people are hiring uh, part-time, um, and then maybe contact lo local business. You'll probably find a lot of PHP WordPress jobs out there, tons of WordPress jobs. Colleen knows. She knows. Greetings from Poland. There we go. How do you feel being 169 years old? Are you still getting around okay? I have to drink tons and tons of McDonald's coffee. That keeps me powered. Mm. And I do a lot of stretching, a lot of hot yoga too when I can. Uh, yep. You mentioned a book that helped you in your writing skills. I can't find that video. Would you recommend any? Ah, yes. Um, one is called The Elements of Style. Just search for that. And there's another one is very, I find even better, it's called On Writing Well. Uh, that said, when you run a write, um, my suggestion is that you, you write your first draft Let's say you write an article, you write your first draft from end to end. Don't get stuck on, on, on paragraphs, or if you can't find the perfect word, just put in a placeholder word. You want to get your all your points covered in your first draft real quickly. Then you go back, and then you clean it up, uh, removing uh, the fancy words uh, for simpler words, uh, simplifying the sentences, uh, and you go through that process, and then you go for a third pass where you try to simplify it even more. Uh, writing is about refinement and simplification and removing excess. If you follow those steps, you make your writing a lot better. Uh, but those are the two books I recommend. Uh, there's also another one called Writing in Bullets, which is um, not very famous, didn't do very well, I think, in terms of sales, but it's actually a pretty good book. It teaches you how to write in a concise manner for uh, the internet. It's called Writing in Bullets. All right. Said says, sup. Uh, let's see, let's go. Machine learning engineer here. I love the transparency of your channel. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Greetings from Jamaica. Mm. Let's see what we got here. Hey, Steph. You said you would check up on PHP Swole. Want to know if, if you have big ups from Ghana? I haven't. Sorry, I have to look into that. Do you use GitHub? Yes, we store all our stuff in private GitHub re, uh, repos for sure. It's a good way just to back up stuff. Stefan, why companies in their job description require so many skills? 
uh, two, three languages in average, one to two frameworks. Well, that's very classic, by the way, in job postings. Um, the HR departments will list everything that's popular, and it's it's zany, it's zany, but that's the way it is. Um, when the fact of the matter is, you, you, you probably need a small subset of the requirements that they list. Alexander, how long does it take for front end developer to successfully transition to back end? You should be able to get there pretty quickly. You know, you just got to learn about server side coding and the request response cycle and stuff. You got to pick a back end language, whether it be JavaScript with Node or Python or PHP or C Sharp or Java. Emmanuel, Steph, how did you get your first batch of schools on Studio Web and how important is customer to customer referral advertising a SaaS? I'm struggling to get my first customers on a new SaaS idea, new idea SaaS. It is, um, I was actually approached by the schools, the first schools. And, um, but it, it's, you know, with, with, with government and quasi-government institutions, it's much more difficult than reaching um, normal businesses, much more difficult. And uh, to give you an idea, the average company will take three, three to four, three to five years to reach a level of uh, profitability, stability, if you will. And the average educational business takes uh, seven to 10 years to uh, establish itself, seven to 10. Just the nature of government-based businesses. So uh, yeah, I can confirm uh, both situations actually. Um, I think uh, what you have to do is you're gonna have to, uh, unless you're lucky like I was, I got the first couple of schools to reach out to me, uh, you would have to um, reach out to businesses and offer offer something to them for free. Uh, maybe a freemium model or maybe uh, they get a year or two free, I don't know. And uh, this with the assumption is that you have a product that is useful to them, you know? I'm assuming that. New Python developer in mid-30s, what would you say is the job outlook in the near future and where would you steer your learning? I think the job outlook is fine. Um, Again, I will let the market uh, dictate to you, uh, also your personal desires, you know, in terms of what kind of Python development are you doing? Are you doing scripting? Are you doing Python web? Are you doing uh, server automation, you know? So um, you, could ex you could either go deeper if you feel that there might be opportunity there, or if you have a lot of work with the current set of Python skills that you have now, you might want to get into, develop some of your softer skills communications, maybe you can get into architecture, product development, you know, that kind of stuff. Or you can go across, what did they say, they call it another vertical. You can maybe learn JavaScript web or something, Node, because there's gonna be a lot of demand for that for a while. All right. Hey, Stefana, if I created SaaS app or a consulting website, how long does it take for it to get listed on Google? Well, that uh, it's not the it's not the nature of your apps. It's just the nature of uh, you know of your website marketing efforts and your SEO. Although, if you just build a website properly, it's got a kind of it's going to have kind of built-in SEO, if you will. But uh, that's about web marketing. All right. Hey, Steph. I am from Chile and want to move to Canada. I have three years' experience coding. Any recommendations? Yes. Uh, start reaching out to Canadian companies. Uh, make sure you write well in English or French if you're going to go to Quebec. Quebec is the French part of uh, Canada. And then also reach out to the Canadian consulate and see what they have to say. Is it true that most developer, oh, excuse me, is it true that most of the developers do overtime? Oh yeah, if you're working as a developer, especially for startups, expect to be working a lot, a lot. I took some YouTuber's advice for landing my first gig. It's like an internship, but the person I'm working for is paying me with PHP Storm, Laracast experience, and flexible hours. Oh, there you go. I guess you're referring to me. Maybe not. Hi, Steph. Where can I find other skilled and motivated coders in my area? Meetups seem to attract many needy people who just like to show off. Yeah, I never went to small entrepreneur meetups, 
And I never went to uh, coder meetups for that reason. Um, you know, you have this group right here. We have uh, 247 people now who are learning to code or who are coders. And you can maybe start connecting with them through the YouTube channel. Take it from there. Uh, Spring is usually for large businesses with existing software. No JS is for startups. Yeah, it's a fairly accurate assessment. Always exceptions, but a fairly accurate assessment. Let's see. Front-end frameworks is often overkill. True. Making it from pure JS is often a good alternative. Yeah, it depends. It all depends, you know. But yeah, that's true. Uh, a lot of times you don't need to go, uh, you don't need a battleship, you know. Do I need to know design theory to build a beautiful UIs? Um, not really. Design theory is not that complex. Whether you can build a beautiful looking UI has a lot more to do with um, your natural talent. Do you have the designer eye? If you have the designer's eye, you'll be able to make things look good. If you don't, use templates. Are there more money in programming or selling informational products online? Um, depends how successful you are. It's a lot easier to become a programmer, I can tell you that. Hey, Steph, love your content. What does the role of software architecture contain? Would love if you talked about solutions architecture, cloud architect, consulting architect. Oof, that's going to require uh, its own... Uh, its own presentation. Oh, we're, right, we're already 40 minutes in. I need to get a glass of water. You know what? I'm going to play a video. It's like a minute-long video so I can take a little break that I created about two years ago. I thought it was kind of funny, so you might be entertained by this while I get a, a glass of water. All right. There we go. <laughs> As we can see, PHP is taking the quick lead, but Python and Ruby are coming out of the gates. Here comes JavaScript. We seem to be having a little bit of trouble with JavaScript. Oh, it's a package conflict. C Sharp, Java, and C++ are not out yet. They're still writing the code, still writing the code. Here comes C Sharp in Java. Oh, we got a late entrance. Swift. Swift's new language. Got all kinds of optimizations. They're still writing that C code. All right, it's compiled. All right. Got my water. Mm. That that little video took me hours to make, believe it or not. Hours. So you better have liked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Mm. All right. So um, how are we doing? 43 minutes. So we're coming to a close of this thing. All right. Hi, Steph. Any ideas how an experienced dev can use his talents to donate skills to COVID, to fight COVID-19? Do you know of any non-profits, et cetera? Well, in fact, a developer I know, he developed a website that allowed people to search Google Maps for local restaurants, and you can click and then go buy the uh, gift certificate from the restaurant to keep them afloat. He doesn't make any money. He just sends people to the restaurant's uh, page. So you could do something like that, maybe help people, uh, uh, help restaurants, local restaurants. That could be an idea. Mm. Laugh out loud. Share the link of this video, if you don't mind. I want to share it with my friend. Yeah, no problem. I'll put it up as a standalone. It was a, an intro video I put up it was attached to some other video uh, a couple years ago. I'll put this one up as a standalone. Uh, Steph, what is your opinion about coding challenge websites such as Leak Code or Code Signal? Is it worth the time or are those part of tutorial hell? Mm. 
only if the, the challenges, like there's code challenges in Studio Web, but it's within the context of a, a proper uh, curriculum and a structure. So the code challenges take you uh, step by step in a direction to get you to where you're, you're able to write commercial code. And that is, uh, so I don't know if they do that. I, you know, a lot of times they're just kind of willy nilly. You learn a whole bunch of different things, but there's, you're left, you know, people are always like, I don't know what I'm doing. Whereas I leverage code challenges, theoretical, and lots of video, of course, and it takes you to a place. There is a goal, there is a direction. So that's the thing I would be looking for. So, uh, but you, okay. Hey, Steph, is it a great move to, to do database development and going into software engineering? It, it's all good, you know. Um, database development is fine. It's, you know, look at the job. Like, again, the uh, seven uh, laws of code. Law number six, look at the market. The market's going to tell you a lot. Look at what kind of places are going to be hiring dedicated database uh, DBAs, right, and versus software developers. And that might help you make your choice in terms of uh, where you go, you know. Uh, let's see. I find configurations and setups like package, the JSON, Webpack, dependency, etc. are so confusing. Any tips? Yeah, well, apparently it's one of the problems in that whole space. It's a, it's a big mess. Um, I have no tips off the top of my head. I kind of circumvented that. Is it better to use Mac or Windows to write? There is no difference. They, it's personal choice. You can, you can get everything you want on both platforms. I'm learning PHP, and I always local host and server issues. Also, can you speak on the company local? Helps set up WordPress environments locally. Thanks. Well, setting up WordPress locally shouldn't be... Uh, you install MAMP or WAMP or something like that, and then you just install WordPress. Although PHP hosting with WordPress is like so cheap, you know, you could, you know, pay the five bucks a month and upload WordPress there and experiment there in a subdirectory if, you, if, it's, if you have a live site. Uh, there we go. Why we still use PHP? Why is still PHP so powerful? Um, PHP is so widely used, and a big part of it is because of WordPress and uh, Drupal, and I think Joomla now is PHP. And uh, it's, it's just so widely used. And the PHP people have really gone out of their way to, to refine and mature that language. So PHP 7 is a, is a very capable, it's as capable as any of the other major players in that space. So. And it's easy to pick up. Stefan, I'm looking to build a web application primarily. There are a lot of days, input forms, and da then data visualization. Will JavaScript play a big role on this? Yeah, if you're going to be displaying data in the web browser, you're going to be using a lot of JavaScript to uh, animate and so on. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hey, Steph, what do you think about the book Clean Code of Uncle Bob and which books do you recommend? Um, I have not read Uncle Bob's stuff, but Clean Code is huge. I, I recommended a book um, yesterday. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put in the links, uh, recommend, uh, Martin Fowler is a book I recommend. I'll put a link under this, um, under this video once uh, it goes into archive. So check in about an hour or two and I'll have the link to the book I would recommend if you already have some um, programming skills and you want to refine it to your like, intermediate level, you want to get advanced. Uh, let's see. What, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. This is a good question, Andreas. How long does it take to learn PHP to make a simple freelance WordPress? websites pretty quickly. You don't need WordPress. You, excuse me, you don't need PHP to work with WordPress, by the way. You don't need any skills to work with WordPress. You can just install it. Um, I've had several people tell me that going from scratch with Studio Web, they've learned the HTML5, CSS3, the JavaScript, the PHP, the SQL, and gotten jobs 
uh, within 45, uh, 60 days, something like that. So you can do it. depends how dedicated you are. But whether it takes you a month or two or four or five months, once you're there, you're there, and you're fine. What is your favorite MVC PHP framework and why? I prefer Laravel, but I'm warming to Cake PHP. We uh, use Laravel. Uh, we, I haven't looked at Cake or Symphony in years and years, so I couldn't say about those now. But we use Laravel because um, it's by far the pro most prominent PHP uh, framework. It's very powerful. And uh, because it's the most prominent, uh, it's far easier to find PHP developers who know Laravel. All right, so um, I'll answer one last question, and then I'm going to head off because I've been on this for a long while now. It's uh, 50 minutes, wow. Well. So should you learn first front end for a few years and back end for a few years or both of them at the same time? If you're doing freelance, just do both at the same time. If you do Studio Web, the web stack course, you learn both at the same time. And then you have a grounding and you can choose whether you're going to concentrate in one or on one or the other. It doesn't take years. Uh, all right. Whatever. Okay, we're at 50 minutes, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to let you go. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost three. I got to go cook. Um, that's it. We'll talk soon.